recovery forces uh, for tonight's uh, recovery of the crew were dispatched from uh, the town of Kustanai in northern Kazakhstan, just across the Russian border. Uh, eight helicopters dispatched. Six of those helicopters made their way uh, to uh, the uh, forward staging point of Arkalik, uh, which is the prime landing site staging point uh, near the landing site itself. Two other helicopters were dispatched far to the west to the town of Aktobe to be uh, in the region of what would be uh, the deployment of uh, recovery forces in the event of a ballistic landing. Uh, that would be a landing that would uh, fall the uh, Soyuz far short of its intended target in the unlikely event of a technical problem. There will be four additional Additional helicopters deployed uh, from Kustanai uh, about two hours before touchdown. Uh, those uh, additional helicopters uh, will fly directly from Kustanai to the landing site uh, to uh, add uh, to the support capability uh, to uh, extract the crew. Two of the additional uh, helicopters who will make their way midway through the prime landing site and the ballistic landing zone so that they can move in either direction depending on the actual trajectory and final landing point of the Soyuz TMA-06M. These uh, helicopters will be supported by three uh, fixed-wing aircraft uh, belonging to the Ros Aviatsa Search and Recovery Forces. Uh, one of those airplanes, an Antonov craft, uh, will be uh, a flying command and, uh, center to relay both voice uh, from the Soyuz crew back to uh, flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov, as well as uh, to provide uh, data uh, that will be relayed from the Soyuz spacecraft as it approaches the actual prime landing zone to the northeast of Arkalik. And it's always good to remind uh, our viewers that um, because of the altitude of the International Space Station at 254 statute miles and the look angle of the antennas on the Soyuz as it uh, makes its way uh, in its southwest to northeast trajectory to its landing site, we could wind up with some choppy communications at times as uh, the Soyuz enters the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, that is not uncommon. Uh, last time uh, that there was a Soyuz landing back in November, we were very fortunate to have almost unbroken communications with the returning Soyuz crew, uh, so we'll have to wait and see, but uh, don't be alarmed if uh, there are gaps in communications uh, from the Soyuz vehicle as it makes its way to the landing site. That is customary. Now is something that looks like the uh, picture in figure, in figure five. So, and that was unclear to me exactly how I got to that picture in figure five, but um, I think I've got it now. It's louder. A little bit louder? Yeah. Long chair. Yeah. At the uh, maximum. Maximum. Okay. Mm -hmm. Possible. To Moscow, MK. Moscow Station. In OKV for Kazbek. Go ahead. Tushana. Silence. Okay, we'll be sending it in one minute. Right now, I copy loud and clear. How was? Loud and clear, too. So you can calibrate the time correctly. Uh, we're about uh, just over two hours away from sunrise at the landing site, uh, which will be uh, 7.42 a.m. Saturday morning Kazakhstan time, uh, 8.42 p.m. Central time here on Friday night. Uh, the choreography of the deployment of the helicopters now would call for the uh, 
four remaining helicopters who are uh, which are still in Kustanai, which is the main staging city for landing operations uh, for tonight's return of the Expedition 34 crew. They will be airborne about two hours before landing. Uh, it is about a two-hour helicopter ride from Kustanai to the landing site, so they'll be arriving right around the time uh, of the touchdown of the Soyuz. The helicopters pre-staged in Arkalik in the wee hours Thursday morning will be deployed about 30 minutes before touchdown, and all of those helicopters uh, will be joined uh, up eight prime helicopters at the prime landing site uh, flying in a racetrack pattern around the landing zone to await uh, the arrival of the Soyuz under its main chute. Display plus TV command sent. Yes, format, 42. format 42 confirmed. Working page 95. Rendezvous format, I navigated to it. Confirm. Just four minutes away from the undocking command that will initiate uh, the opening of the hooks holding uh, the Soyuz spacecraft to the Poisk module. Physical separation at 6.43 p.m. Central Time. Indicator, maneuver. Air one cent, copy. Air eight, air eight cent. Uh, on SSVP, we can see inaudible. Moscow, Kazbek. Go ahead. When do we need uh, to release the transmit button? Do we need to wait for your go? After separation. Copy. Immediately after separation, we'll release the transmit button. D2 is on. D16 is not on. We should be acquiring uh, a television signal from the uh, Soyuz television camera, the external television camera on the Soyuz over Russian ground stations here shortly. We're less than five minutes away from physical separation of the TMA-06M from the Poisk module of the International Space Station. D7 is uh, armed, copy. Zero two thirty-nine sending D7. Copy. ISS Moscow, Energy 2 for Roman. Roman, you are go to turn the recording off. Coming up on about a minute away from the crew uh, beginning the undocking process by issuing the undocking command to open the hooks. But I don't it's called Program 12. The Soyuz hooks uh, will take about three minutes to disengage from uh, the docking mechanism on the Poisk module. Uh, uh, are you given the docking mechanism uh, now powered up on the Soyuz vehicle. Everything in readiness for the departure of Ford, Novitsky, and Torelka. Copy. We are go or to open the hooks at the set time, which is 02400. 
And uh, the video of a Russian ground station is now locking up as uh, we prepare for the departure of the Soyuz vehicle. Uh, hooks closed, D 15. The visiting vehicle officer here in Mission Control reports uh, that hooks are driving open. Transfer hatch closed, indicator on. Uh, selection is on. A work in page 96. Okay, so, uh, make sure the uh, timer is ready. It's ready. Inaudible. Uh, go ahead. Two minutes away now from physical separation. All Soyuz systems reported in excellent shape to support uh, undocking and landing. The International Space Station now flying 254 statute miles over Mongolia. Inaudible. Okay, the uh, capture is no LED, is no... Uh, no Physical separation confirmed at 6.43 p.m. Central Time over northeastern Mongolia. Oh. Indicator LED is off and combined gaso is confirmed. Okay, guys. Good luck. Thank you, Roman. Bye-bye. You remember Kevin's request? Of course. Ford, Novitsky, Tarelkin. Uh, one minute left. Departing the facility that has been their home for the past five months. A dark and port is clear. No foreign object. Release transmit. Transmit release. The Soyuz crew reporting that uh, the docking interface at the Poisk module is clean, free of debris. About a minute and a half away from uh, the separation burn that will initiate an opening rate uh, between uh, Soyuz and the International Space Station that will result in uh, the Soyuz moving to a point 12 kilometers away from the International Space Station for its deorbit burn less than two and a half hours from now.